Hi, my name is Ashley and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be making this brand new pattern and it is the Hydro Pouch. Um, it's adorable, I love it. It's a super quick sew, great scrap buster too. Um, so it is designed to fit on these 40 ounce tumblers with the handles, uh, but you can make modifications so it fits on smaller ones for sure. Um, so, I only made a couple of modifications from the way the pattern is written. So I did add the slip pocket on the front here. And then for my Velcro, I added this one inch webbing to the back of it so that it's pretty on one side. Um, and then I also added just this little strap end piece here, if you will, just to give it a little more of a finished look. Um, so I used, um, this print is Theratox from Fabric Therapy. My black material is Stardust from My Punk Broidery. Um, and my lining is also the Theratox from Fabric Therapy. And I just put a couple of things inside. It holds keys, small items. And then to put it on the cup, you go ahead and open it up and you wrap it around the cup and slip it through the rectangle ring and you don't want to pull it too too tight otherwise it'll start to deform the shape of the bag um so yeah that's it and then you just loop it back on top of itself and you're in good shape so there's really nothing else for me to say about it let's go ahead and start sewing i'll show you the pieces that we need real quick and then we'll get right on. It's a super quick sell. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more. And thank you so much to the designer for allowing me to create this tutorial with your pattern. Really quick, we're gonna go over the pieces. Um, and I made a couple of changes, so I have a few extra pieces here. So I have my two lining panels, my two exterior panels, and I fuse them with fusible fleece. And then I have my one inch webbing piece. I have my number five zipper tape. I have my um, hook and loop, which I think this is just the hook portion of my Velcro. I have my zipper panel for the exterior and the lining. And then my bottom gusset panel exterior and lining. Then I have my rectangle ring, my number five zipper pull, and my logo tag. And then additionally, I've cut a small square to go around the edge of the Velcro piece. I've also cut a matching piece of webbing to go onto the back of the Velcro piece. as well as two, um, these are gonna be slip pockets. So I've cut a portion of the top off and I'm gonna make these a slip pocket right on the front. So that's everything I have. Um, let's start sewing and I'm just gonna go in my own order. So I'm sorry if it doesn't follow the patterns order, but we'll get there. Okay, I'm gonna start by putting my um, pockets slip pockets if you're going to be doing this right sides together and I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top here and if you're following the pattern you won't be doing this and then I'm going to fold them out and away from each other and I'm going to just clip at the top here and top stitch at an eighth of an inch away from the seam. If you are using a fabric that you can press, I would suggest that you do that. Okay, next I'm gonna do my sew on tag. So I made a small line with a removable tool in the center. This is gonna be my front panel. And I also marked my centers before I started. Um, on my actual tag. So 
I'm gonna line my tag up. All right, and I'm not gonna backstitch when I attach my tag. I'm gonna pull my threads through. It's my um, thread does not match my tag. And I'm gonna make sure that I land in the same position that I began in with my final stitch. There's that. So I'm gonna pull my thread to the back and tie everything off. All right, so you have that. And if you are doing a slip pocket, go ahead and line up your slip pocket. And we're gonna baste the sides on. So this is gonna be the front of my bag. Then I'm gonna grab one of my lining panels and I'm gonna match these up wrong sides together. And I did snip my centers on all of these. Whoa, that could have been bad. Um, she does give the option in the pattern to place double-sided tape. Um, in between your lining and your exterior. So you could definitely do that. I think it's easier just to baste for me. Not for everybody though. So buy the pattern and read it. So your front panel is done. This is going to be your front pocket and it, it might not fit my phone. After the seam allowance, my phone has a chunky case on it, but if you have just a regular case on it, you should be good. So there's your front panel. Let's go ahead and do our back panel. We're going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to match the centers up and baste around. Your back panels are basted together. Then we're gonna go ahead and measure down from the top. There is a measurement in the pattern. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna give it to you because I feel like it might potentially give away the dimensions of the actual piece. So make sure you check your pattern for the measurement on where you should make some marks within your seam allowance. So I'm gonna do those and I'll be right back. Okay. I've made my marks within my seam allowance where she instructs in the pattern. So you could set that to the side for just a minute. And I'm gonna grab my piece of webbing and my uh, rectangle ring. And I'm gonna go ahead and just baste these together real quick. And you wanna baste them at an eighth of an inch. I'm just gonna melt the edges of this one more time. I did do it earlier, but it doesn't quite look like it. All right, so set that to the side. And then if you are going to be doing the webbing backing here, go ahead and grab that piece as well as your um, hook fastener. I put double-sided tape on the back here and I'm just gonna line these up together Okay. And now I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away down both long edges. Okay, and then we're gonna come back down the other side. Just gonna flip it over, make sure I actually caught everything. I did, you know, I wish I had put black in my bobbin for this. Dang it. All right, and then we're going to pick an end. 
And I'm gonna wrap the end here with this little square of vinyl. And again, this isn't part of the pattern. You don't have to do it. I just think it makes it look a little bit more finished. Only when it's centered though, not when it's all wonky like that. All right, and I'm just gonna stitch around this. So that's what I have. Now we're gonna come back to our back panel. Make sure you're looking at it facing up, so right side up. And then you're going to just line up your piece here, your long Velcro piece. And the top of it should be lined up with the mark that you made in the pattern. And baste that down at an eighth of an inch. And now on the other side, we're going to line up the D-ring. And the top of it should be with the top of the line. We're gonna do the same thing. Base that down an eighth of an inch. And then this is how it's gonna wrap around your bottle in the end. So it'll be just like that. So see, it's gonna look really pretty. You know, you'll have this webbing on one side and then the hook material on the other. So for now, I'm just going to keep everything all rolled-ish up as I can get it. Okay, so our back panel is ready. Our front panel is ready. Let's work on our zipper panel. I cut my zipper a little longer than needed. So we're gonna go ahead and peel the paper backing off of the um, zipper panel and I'm gonna line up my zipper. The long straight edges, line those up. And then I'm gonna base this in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have your exterior basted on, we're gonna go ahead and lay that right sides together with our long lining piece. And again, I cut this longer and wider than necessary. Um, so just make sure if you do that, you have at least one straight edge, um, one long straight edge. All right, so these are right sides together, zipper facing up. Let's go ahead and stitch that at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and press our lining and our exterior away from our zipper and top stitch an eighth of an inch away. Just make sure everything stays pulled away from your zipper. And then I'm gonna come around and I'm gonna close up the open edge as well. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and open up the side of my zipper and I'm gonna put my zipper pull on. Make sure that it's even, and it is, okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trim all of this up, um, cut off the extra here, and then make my zipper even on both ends. I'll be right back. All right, now once I've trimmed everything up, I'm just going to melt the ends of my zipper tape. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our bottom gusset panels and lay our exterior right side up. Take our zipper panel and flip it over so everything's right side together. 
and you can baste this in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now grab your lining panel piece and lay it right sides together. And then stitch that in place with your final seam allowance of quarter inch. Then go ahead and open these up and press them away from each other. And we're gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the fold on the exterior um, gusset piece. So not on the zipper, but right here. Then we can lay everything back right side up. And then you're going to grab your other end of your exterior, bring it right up, match it to your other side of your zipper panel. Base that at an eighth of an inch. All right, then we're going to grab our lining panel and bring it up right sides together, match up the short edges and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance one more time. And same thing, we're gonna open this up and top stitch it at an eighth of an inch away from the fold. Make sure everything's pulled nice away from the zipper panels. Okay, so this is what you should have right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take a second here and match up the centers on my gusset panel. And then I'm gonna baste everything in place along the edges. And I'm gonna start in the center where my marks are and move outward. Just help everything stay centered. And then I'll come back up to the top and make my way back down. I found doing it that way keeps things from shifting most of the time. Don't cut your finger though, like I almost just did. All right, same thing on the other side. Okay, so now we're gonna mark our centers if you haven't already. So the only spot I don't have my center marked on right now is my actual zipper tape. You never, ever, 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 ever want to snip this kind of zipper tape. I mean, any kind really, but especially the striped kind. Don't do it, don't snip it, it's not worth it. Okay, now we're ready to put everything together. So you should have these three pieces, your finished gusset, your finished front panel, and your finished back panel. I'm gonna start with my front panel. And what we're going to do is we're going to go around and match our top and bottom centers first. Um, I did need to snip into my gusset when I made it the first time. But again, don't snip your zipper tape. Um, I mean, I, I would suggest never snipping your zipper tape. But if you're using the striped stuff, most definitely. Don't snip your zipper tape. All right, so I'm matching up my centers at the bottom. And what I do is I just put a clip like on the center mark and then one on each side of it just to keep things from wobbling around. All right, so I'm going to just make small snips Eighth of an inch, no more. Your seam allowance is only quarter of an inch here. And I'm going to just kind of work around the curve. And clip everything in. Make sure you get your zipper in there. OK, 
Okay, so here's where I want to make sure things are even. Um, and I don't believe they are at the moment. So since I have this here, I'm going to measure from the top of the pocket fold to the top of this gusset on the side is a half an inch. So I want to make sure that it's the same on both sides so that my um, bag is symmetrical. And I'll have to move my zipper out of the way um, when I'm coming around here. But for now, I'm just going to clip it the best that I can. And then we'll move the zipper out of the way when we get to that part. All right, so this is what you should have. Just take a minute, make sure that everything looks right. I'm going to baste everything down at an eighth of an inch. You could definitely just sew it right on at a quarter inch, but I'd rather baste first. So I'm gonna do that. Let's go around at a quarter of an, or um, an eighth of an inch first and then I'll go back at a quarter. So I'm gonna open up my zipper here to come around the zipper part. And I'm just gonna hold my zipper in place the best that I can. So for this part, I'm gonna have to close it back up because um, I gotta get by my zipper. Pull, my zipper pull, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But see how it's, it's so much harder when the zipper is closed. I wonder if I can get by my zipper pull. I'm only going around at an eighth of an inch. I think I can. I think I can. I can. All right, I'm going to turn it out. Just make sure everything looks like it's positioned properly. Now we're going to go around at a quarter inch seam allowance this time um, and I'm going to start up here this time I think because I feel like the zipper is the hardest part, at least it is for me. Um, so I like to start there. I messed up right here. I'll have to turn it out and see. You want to make sure that you don't get bubbles if you can avoid it. I 
And I'm just gonna help at the corners, keep things nice and flat so that you don't get any pleats or wrinkles or whatever. And just go one stitch at a time if you have to. Same thing, I'm just flattening out the material as I finish off the corner. See how we did. It's so stinking cute. All right, let's see. Oh, my phone does fit in here. Look at that. Okay, so now you can do one of two things. You could go through and you could bind this side and then move on and put the other side on. Or you could put the back on and then bind both sides at once. Um, so for this tutorial, I'm going to do all my binding in one. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put my back on. Make sure that your um, strap and panel are facing the correct way. So everything should be right sides together. Um, except I'm going to make my snips and my gusset really, really quick before I start putting it together because we know I need them. And then this time it's a little bit easier um, because you could snip up at the top corner. So see this time you don't have zipper tape here, so... I think it makes it a little bit easier. All right, so we're going to place these right sides together. Go ahead and match up your centers at the bottom and the top, just like we did for the front panel. And then I'll come back, I'll stitch at an eighth of an inch, then a quarter of an inch, then we'll bind this baby up and we're done. This time I'm gonna go around at a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just back stitching over the connector. back stitching over the strap as well on this side.
Okay, now the last thing we're gonna do is go ahead and grab our binding and we're going to attach it. And let's see, I'm not sure how the best way I wanna do this is gonna be. So I wanna start at the bottom for sure. The way I did it last time was a little weird and I don't remember what I did or what made it weird for that matter. Well, I'm just gonna start at the bottom and center it. Um, this is the 7 8 inch binding. So it's not ideal for everyone, um, but it has its time and place and I kind of like it. So that's what we're going with. I'm just going to toss a clip here and there on. When you get up to the zipper, um, you want to make sure that your binding is not going to interfere with your zipper pull. So that's super important. Okay, so what I did was I folded it over only at the zipper um, just to keep it away from my zipper pull so it didn't interfere with anything. So I'm gonna attach this all the way around at a scant quarter inch seam allowance um, so I don't interfere with the seam allowance that I already have and am happy with. Repeat that same exact thing for the back panel. All right, that's it, we did it. Let's go ahead and turn it out. Hopefully it still looks decent. All right, let's push out these corners. Oh my goodness, it's adorable. This one is mine too. I, I purposely made this one for myself because this morning I made one for my daughter and 
I need one. She can't have one if I don't have one. So, there's that. All right, there's the inside. There's not really anything in the inside. Obviously, no pockets. You could put some pockets. I saw um, from the Crafty Reporter, she might be showing you how to put card slots um, on the against the front panel because it's not something you could put on the back panel since it's got to sit against the cup. But the front panel, all game. All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, it's so stinking cute. Okay, so I've had hers on my cup. Okay, so this is hers. This was on my cup for the majority of the day today because I thought it was so stinking cute. So she has her own cup and now her own pouch. So now this one... is going on here. All right, see? Now because we put that webbing on, it looks super stinking cute. Looks like you have custom hook and loop Velcro. can't put it so tight that it's going to squeeze on the pouch too because then you might be limited to what you could get in it so once it's on the cup my big old honking phone does not fit in it but it has a big um big case on it like the phone that I'm using to record this tutorial doesn't have a big old case on it, so it would probably fit on here perfect. Um, but if I take you out and try that, then that won't work. So here it is. It is beautiful. I love it. I love the little pocket on the front. It would actually also be perfect for my keys or for um, this would be perfect to toss like some quarters in and stuff. My daughter does swimming lessons and they have a little snack stand with quarter snacks for after swim lessons and I never have quarters so we're going to start now. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I absolutely love making these. Um, thank you so much to the designer for allowing me to do this tutorial with your pattern. It's adorable and amazing and I can't wait to keep making more. So if you found this video helpful please go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one.